Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. We recently got news about the new Ripple Archax deal and how Ripple is expanding their partnership with Archax. Specifically, Graham Rodford, CEO and co-founder of Archax, did sit down at Apex this week to discuss the implementations. I'm just going to play you guys a little clip of that. The full YouTube video is linked up here, so I also will link this in the description of the video for you. Listen to this. Everything we're doing is available on XRPL. So every security that's already available through us. So we've already tokenized UK equities, UK gilts. Um, Aberdeen own us. We've tokenized their money market funds and BlackRock as well. We've got They're all available on, on our platform now. Um, and more specifically to the community, hopefully it means we're kind of more of a useful partner. So we already have XRP trading on our venue, so people can trade that in its simplest form. But if people want to create tokens on XRPL, they can do it with us. If they want to create securities, they can do it with us. If they want to custody them, we use Ripple Custody, um, formerly Metico, um, which is now all embedded within our system. So hopefully those that are looking to really work on the digital security space. So it sounds as though Archax is now fully integrated into Ripple's system. You heard you can tokenize anything on the XRP ledger. You can even purchase XRP natively from Archax. You can custody in their Ripple custody solution, which was formerly Medico. So much in terms of advancements from uh, when they originally announced their partnership only a few short months ago. So some great news there. Wanted to thank XRP Drops for posting that, guys. I also happen to see this new update from Pivio and Currency Cloud. So we recently reported on this uh, new partnership just uh, about a month or two ago. Well, they've already hit the ground running. Currency Cloud and Pivio, the fintech building G Local Financial Services Infrastructure, have announced now that they are going to provide payment solutions for Chinese e-commerce businesses businesses operating in emerging markets. One of the main challenges faced by Chinese online merchants is the payment collection and payout process in different markets, especially in emerging regions where infrastructure is not well developed and regulations are complex. And so with this recently minted partnership, Pivio and Currency Cloud aim to address this challenge by providing a bespoke service for each merchant according to their specific needs and preferences. Uh, here we've got a quote, Pivio is a fast growing business in an exciting space. For Chinese firms, the challenges they face in the payment collection and payout process are a real blocker to expansion. So the solution that the Pivio team has built is very much needed. Uh, another quote here, this partnership will help the Pivio team further disrupt the online e-commerce payment landscape in emerging markets. And we look forward to being on that journey with them. Specifically tackling the Chinese market, I could only imagine how much friction there can be, you know, especially if we look at it from a socio-political point of view too, where the government is uh, very restrictive as to where uh, you know, the citizens of China can do business. So one could only assume that the payment process could get, uh, could get, I guess, in some cases kind of sticky, uh, just depending. So great news here from the Pivio and Currency Cloud collaboration that we uh, recently heard about just a few short months ago. Also wanted to bring this up, guys, with regards to Algorand. Now, haven't heard too much about Algorand recently, but Michael Branch brought this to my attention. Algorand attracts Python developers with its new Algo Kit 2.0. So improving their development solution, Algorand is attracting Python developers and facilitating the creation of startups within their ecosystem. According to Min Wei, the head of ecosystem growth at the company, in an exclusive interview, Wei discussed Algorand's process. Uh, she says here, despite the exhaustion that comes with the event's packed schedule, Wei expressed enthusiasm about the positive reception and engagement Algorand has been receiving. By targeting Python developers, Algorand aims to foster a vibrant developer community within their ecosystem. And guys, here's a quote, getting developers to come build on our ecosystem and helping these developers launch successful startups in our ecosystem is part of my job. So all that's, you know, that's very important to us uh, to we have a good support network. We have good um, infrastructure to help them really be successful. I guess uh, lost in translation there a little bit, but uh, I think you guys get the point here. Algorand, one of those cryptocurrencies that uh, really had a bad string of events occur at uh, the top of the bull run. It is part of my legacy portfolio that I do discuss over there at patreon.com slash working money channel. Unfortunately, it has not recovered to the same kind of capacity that uh, we had hoped. But guys, just check this out. Just on the chart here, you can see Algorand forming what is looking like a beautiful textbook inverted head and shoulders pattern. So, um, you know, I'm hoping we are going to see some traction for this particular token and that all the controversy is behind them, considering we are seeing more development with the Algorand Foundation and uh, deciding to go with an improved development structure could only help this project. This collaboration enables users to lend, borrow and trade against their liquidity pool tokens, generating yield and providing a unique way to earn their assets. When discussing the differentiation of Algorand from other layer one blockchains, Way emphasized its speed with transactions finalized in under three seconds and high throughput supporting nearly 10,000 transactions per second. So um, it's not that the Algorand uh, blockchain is bad technology. 
definitely got some great partnerships brewing in the background and the technology is fantastic as well. But there have been some issues that, uh, well, here, let me just bring up the Algorand chart again. When we finally hit the bottom there in the crypto market back in and around here, Algorand hit 16 cents in December of 2022. Uh, we did start to see the market go up, but then after that, by mid to late 2023, Algorand did plummet to new lows. So not good for the token price. I got to say it's probably one of my worst cost averages um, in this bull run. Nevertheless, I am still optimistic uh, that I might be able to squeeze some profit out of that. I do still believe in this particular cryptocurrency and uh, you know it is good to see that developments are continuing to occur. So I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Also happened to see this guy's Payment Fintech Airwallets reports steady business growth in Hong Kong. So Airwallets, another one of those Ripple partners that is knocking it out of the park in Hong Kong specifically. Arnold Chan, Asia General Director at Airwallets, he said as a thriving business hub in Asia, Hong Kong has continued to accelerate digital technology options, positioning it as a driving force for the city's future economic progress. This is evident in the growing number of businesses who are turning to Airwallex to support their financial services and payment needs. He also said, uh, following the surge many fintechs experienced on the heels of the pandemic, our growth in Hong Kong over the last year demonstrates our strategic focus on commitment to the Hong Kong business community. We continue to optimize for our customers in Hong Kong, and this year enhanced our online payment acceptance capabilities, expanding our local payment rails and introduced air wallets reimbursements supporting businesses across e-commerce travel import and export trade retail and financial services so really kind of expanding out their uh, their product suite to incorporate all these different facets uh, that would include cross-border payments of course leveraging a company like RippleNet through air wallets would make that very simple uh, to conduct those transactions so you know it is of the benefit for these companies to decide okay you know this is kind of the prime opportunity for them to expand post pandemic, you know, everybody's kind of getting back on their feet. And, uh, you know, it, this is a great opportunity. 2021 and 22 were great opportunities, great years for uh, for companies to, you know, swoop in. And if they were already financially robust, if their businesses were not decimated by the pandemic, well, for them to swoop in and maybe take up some more market share, buy up some of the smaller companies. And, you know, the companies that were already integrated with RippleNet before the pandemic, I think, had a leg up. So this is why we're seeing companies like Airwallex really thrive, companies like Neom, like Tranglo, uh, you know, just to name three off the top of my head there. The market in Hong Kong is very prime for this as well. So trust in international merchants can drive increased cross-border spend. And Hong Kong customers now show a higher level of trust in international merchants compared to their global counterparts. 77% consider international merchants to be trustworthy, significantly surpassing the global average of 61%. 70% of Hong Kong customers will increase the frequency at which they purchase from overseas merchants in 2024 compared to the global average of 54%. Uh, and this is a, sh- a seamless shopping experience is important for Hong Kong brands to win local customers as well. So all this just kind of helped along by the fact that Airwallex is a connected Ripple partner that can deliver these types of services seamlessly and effectively. So some great news there from the Airwallex camp. Mac Attack XRP also bringing this to our attention, guys. Did you know there was another glitch on an exchange? This time it was the Crypto.com exchange, the XRP community has witnessed yet another XRP glitch on leading crypto exchange, Crypto.com. But this time, it features a rendition issue, so not uh, necessarily a price glitch. Nevertheless, a glitch has been noticed. So the crypto market has been stuck in a bearish consolidation phase, with XRP also caught in the middle of a battle between the bears and the bulls. As we know, a lot of analysts are suggesting that XRP is going to outperform this bull run, just based on the many factors now that uh, are not are no longer present now, i.e. the big one is the Ripple SEC case, which was present in 2021. So, you know, in terms of price, we don't really know exactly. We can only best guess how high XRP will go. But guys, check this out. The XRP glitch observed on Crypto.com deviated from the usual pattern, okay? Most recently, Ido Farina, prominent XRP community figure and XRP Healthcare's head of social adoption, called attention to a glitch on the Crypto.com exchange affecting XRP. So it had nothing to do with the price However, it did have to do with how XRP was listed here. It looks as though uh, something in the back end glitched in the title. The uh, the name of the coin XRP here was written like this as if, uh, you know, there was some code error associated with uh, with just the XRP title specifically. So uh, the glitch did not affect the assets price. It traded at normal value, which uh, at the time of this publication was in and around 45.45 euros, which uh, it was the equivalent of about 45 cents US. Instead, the glitch involved an issue with the rendition of XRP's ticker. Notably, this issue was likely due to a rendering or encoding problem possibly caused 
by an error in the HTML, CSS, or JavaScript that processes the display of the ticker symbol, or a bug in the templating engine or backend system that generates the page content. So, you know, the XRP community consistently looking for these glitches, consistently, you know, pondering the possibilities of why. I mean, the price glitches are, uh, you know, a bigger driver of speculation, but, uh, you know, I thought I'd bring this to your attention regardless. Glitches on the XRP chart, not just on price, but also with regards to the name. You know, it, it and I, I've said this before, it always seems like it's the XRP chart that, uh, you know, sees these glitches. It's never any other cryptocurrency. I mean, I have never seen any other cryptocurrency glitch. If you guys have, please do put it down in the comments section. I would like to know what other cryptos have glitched. Um, but, you know, I've even witnessed one myself. Um, like, a few months ago, maybe it was last year, a year, year and a half ago, when I did see an XRP glitch with my own eyes. Anyway, definitely something to keep our eyes peeled on, guys. Why XRP? Why is it always XRP? The value is going to increase over time. Even David Schwartz has given us a good indication. Anders here posting this. Okay, pay attention to the details. I will say the one negative surprise to me has been the slow adoption of blockchain for payments. Uh, you know, mm, enterprise adoption for payments has been pretty good. That's what Ripple's been focused on. But sort of retail end user adoption for payments has been really slow. And I think the product market fit feels good. The problem is last mile. That was a quote, actually. I guess I should have said that was a quote from David Schwartz from Apex just this past week. So many thoughts right now. But what should stand out for you from this David Schwartz quote is what he says here is that enterprise adoption has been good for blockchain payments, which is the focus for Ripple. Remember a while ago when David showed disappointment for how slow adoption had been for blockchain payments. I now believe he was simply referring to retail payments that Ripple was not focused on. As he mentions here, Ripple is B2B focused. And also remember, recently we had the CEO of Uphold who spoke about some major companies using ODL who he cannot name. So it seems like ODL is not the failure that a lot of people thought. Makes me a little irritated, to be completely honest. Uh, he should have just realized how people were going to take it and run with it. Just my opinion, though. So uh, Anders here does link the video down here. I'm not going to play that video, but I am going to play you guys a clip of David Schwartz commenting on what will drive the value for XRP. Courtesy of Zoom here on Twitter. Listen to this. Um, but our first question is around, um, you know, really what's going to be driving value to XRP, um, particularly kind of around the cross-border and um, sort of more like enterprise payments and financial use cases? Yeah, so you guys can all see the question on the screen. Um, I think the big thing that's going to that's gonna keep XRP like in its central role is its privileged place on the XRP ledger. XRP is the only token that you can pay transaction fees in. It's the only token that every account can receive. The payment engine entering pathfinding always looks for XRP liquidity first. And XRP is auto-bridged through the order book. So XRP liquidity is sort of preferentially taken over to other types of liquidity just from order crossing. So XRP is always going to have a special place as a sort of liquidity tool on the XRP ledger. In the payment space, I think XRP, because of you know high 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 speed, low cost, and the sort of um, lack of things like MEV and um, you know block producers who are trying to tax transactions, it's going to remain a good intermediary currency for international payments. Ripple's going to continue to use it for cross border payments. You know where where it works well. We're not going to make our customers use an inferior solution to make us us happy. You know, it's on it's on us to make XRP you know be a viable solution. But again, the big thing I think I, I think one of the things probably motivating this is the launch of the stablecoin with the idea that like one will cannibalize the other. I just want to make a point that like the current use for XRP is a tiny fraction of the things that people could be using it for. The market is so early and and. We can't, it's impossible for us to cannibalize ourselves. It's like if a mark, if 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 an ecosystem is one percent of what it should be, trying to fight over that one percent is just that's not what's going to happen, right? We want to be attract. We want to grow the pie, and I think there's lots of room for XRP to grow, and there's lots of room for a stablecoin to grow and to be used, you know, in different use cases. There are some use cases where volatility is absolutely fine. And of course, in some use cases like the AMM, where volatility is actually a plus, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for cross-border payments, you don't have to hold the asset for very long. So if you're thinking, well, I want to use an asset for cross-border payments, but I don't want to be exposed to its volatility, 
There are plenty of entities who consider exposure to XRP volatility a net positive, right? Like there, there are people, like if you wanted to have exposure to any cryptocurrency, whether it was uh, you know, XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, if you wanted exposure to it, you would generally pay for that exposure. That's why people hold Bitcoin, right? They want exposure to the upside. They pay for that upside. And so if you're worried about exposure to both the upside and the downside in payments, there are any number of parties who will gladly take the upside and downside you know, together. So it's not it's not about a barrier. There is going to be value driven to the XRP cryptocurrency based on the things that David Schwartz said. The biggest part here is prioritizing XRP on the ledger, considering it is the native token guys. They prioritize XRP for so many different purposes, as uh, as you heard David Schwartz kind of rattle off a few examples there. And so if XRP is prioritized, obviously, it is going to be the first solution that is pushed out automatically through AMM's liquidity uh, for paying gas fees, right? It's the only token that you can actually use to transact in, uh, in terms of the fees being paid on the XRP ledger as one example there. So XRP is going to be mandatory for parts of these processes, and it's all just going to add to the adoption. It's going to add to the utility. It's going to add to the liquidity once we do see XRP get up off the ground, once we do see regulatory frameworks shape up and look a little bit more meaningful in the United States. It's all part of the game plan. This is why I'm holding, well, not just Algorand, but XRP for the long term. But guys, I'm also thinking of selling a portion of my XRP this bull run. And uh, for all those details, I'm going to be posting that at patreon.com slash working money channel. I'm thinking I'm going to do another live Q&A session probably next week. So for those of you guys who are already subscribed, expect that. Get your questions ready. And for those of you guys who might be interested in joining, it is only $5 a month. You've got direct access to me too. I guess I don't play that up enough. Uh, you know, I, I tend, I want to try to answer all of your questions, whether it's by, uh, you know, a comment in the comment section of the videos or by direct message. So $5 a month only. I think it is pretty good value for what you guys are getting, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.